Good afternoon, everyone. I am Purnima Patil, a doctoral candidate at Kansas State University, work, working with uh, Dr. Jones. As you can see on the screen, uh, today my topic of discussion is investigation of relaxation behavior of irradiated cement paste using statistical nanoindentation. Uh, the structure of presentation uh, is as follows. Um, I will give uh, some background and uh, discuss the advantages of using nanoindentation. Uh, we will talk about how we irradiated the cement paste samples and perform the statistical nano indentation. Uh, we will talk about uh, how the model for the relaxation solution and discuss the results, uh, conclude based on the results, and we will also uh, let you know what we are doing in the future to understand this in a better way. So, Concrete has been widely used uh, in the primary and uh, secondary containment structure in nuclear power, power plants and it has also been used as a shielding material uh, for decades. Uh, despite uh, of its wide use uh, in the nuclear industry, there has been limited study on the long-term performance uh, of the concrete uh, due to irradiation. Um, recent interest of uh, Commercial operator and owners of nuclear power plants in the United States uh, recognized the possibility of uh, increase uh, or the extension of the operating service of uh, nuclear power plants uh, beyond 60 years. So this created a need to understand in detail the long-term performance of concrete and to do so it is important to study the aging viscoelastic properties of uh, concrete. So. Considering the scan data available on the relaxation behavior particularly, uh, the present study seeks to measure and understand the effects of ionizing as well as non-ionizing radiations on the instantaneous elastic models and the relaxation models. So as it has been introduced by the previous speaker, Roshan, uh, about nanoindentation, I will just highlight why we are using this. Uh, it is a very effective and uh, a direct tool. It has an outstanding stability uh, which allows us to uh, hold the load and the depth signal for a very long time. Um, you can obtain a very large set of uh, statistically significant data conveniently. Um, the major advantage of using nano indentation is the ability of this technique to perform the test at very shallow de depth. Uh, which is um, less than 3 micrometers um, and this ensures uh, that we are indenting uh, where in the location where we have uniform dosage of the radiation. Um, so knowing that the relaxation behavior originates from the calcium silicate hydrate in the cement paste, uh, the present study is focused on the neat cement paste. Uh, we are using a uh, water cement ratio of 0 0.35, 0 0.4, and 0 0.5. Um, isopropyl, isopropyl alcohol uh, was used as lubricant for the polishing process uh, just to avoid any uh, further uh, dissolution of hydration products such as uh, calcium hydroxide. Uh, the sizes of polishing discs used and the time spent on each disc is uh, shown in the table below. So our own K-State uh, Triga research uh, reactor facility was used to irradiate the cement paste samples. Uh, the cement paste samples and the iron wires were placed in the LDP bags uh, and were heat sealed. Then we placed this arrangement uh, in the HTP, HTPE sample holder as you can see uh, on the figure. The entire assembly was placed in the central thimble uh, in, of the reactor. The reactor was ramped up to uh, 500 kilowatts in approximately 1.15 minutes and then it was maintained at that power for one hour. Uh, the iron uh, wires uh, placed in between the cement paste sample was used to estimate uh, the variation of the neutron flux and um, it was uh, also used to determine the neutron fl fluence as well as the gamma dose by um, uh, analyzing the activation on the iron wires. Um, to discuss about the relaxation test, uh, we used a Hycitron tribo indenter, which was fitted with the Berkowitz indenter tip. Uh, the statistical nano indentation was performed uh, using a grid size of 5 by 5 
and a spacing of three micrometers. Um, on the right side of the slide, you can see uh, a typical example of a step displacement function with loading and unloading segment of five seconds and a holding segment of 30 seconds at predetermined critical depth. Uh, the critical depth, the maximum critical depth used for each cement sample uh, for both irradiated and the control sample uh, is shown in the table. To model the uh, nano indentation based relaxation behavior, we have uh, employed elastic, viscoelastic correspondence principle, and uh, we have used the relation, inverse relationship between the relaxation modulus and the creep compliance in the transform domain. Uh, the very well-known Snedden uh, elastic solution in the time regime for conical indenture is used uh, here and is given in the equation uh, as shown on the slide. Uh, we have, uh, for com creep compliance function, we have used a three unit uh, Kelvin chain. So this flowchart shows uh, the steps followed to uh, model and fit the experimental uh, relaxation data. We imported the creep compliance function and uh, employed a Laplace transform to uh, remove the time dependence. And then using the inverse relationship between relaxation modulus and the creep compliance, and again doing an inverse Laplace transform, we uh, transferred the space domain into the time domain. Uh, and we uh, derived the uh, relaxation modulus solution, R of T. Uh, then we executed that data and fitted uh, the fit data with the experimental data and exported the fit parameters and the curves. Uh, in the process, uh, we measured the reduced modulus of the cement based sample for both controlled and irradiated test. And as we can see from the table here, uh, the reduced modulus is significantly decreased for the irradiated samples. And we can see a good agreement of this trend uh, in both the relaxation as well as the creep test. Uh, we can also see that the reduction uh, increases with increase in the porosity as uh, for 0.35, there is a 60% reduction from control to irradiated sample, and in 0.5, it is 75%. Um, so, this significant reduction in the modulus is observed at a fluence level which is less than the reference level of uh, 10 to the power 19 uh, neutron centimeter per square, uh, as documented in the literature. And uh, we believe that. Uh, this is due to the elevated sensitivity of uh, the surface of the sample to the damage because we pre-polish the sample before we irradiated them. And also the ability of nano indentation to indent the sample at a very shallow depth. Because as we already know, uh, concrete is a good, it has a good shielding capacity and neutron only affects the first layer of the concrete which is in between 10 to 50 centimeters and nano indentation uh, can easily indent that particular layer and we see a significant uh, effect of neutron in that layer. So this uh, provides evidence that at nanoscale we do see effect of neutron on the water phase and as well as on the uh, solid phase of the cement paste. Um, here, uh, I'm showing uh, the box and whisker plot of uh, the relaxation modulus as a scalar quantity. So we have a uh, relaxation modulus at 30 seconds. And again, we see that it is profoundly reduced uh, compared to the controlled samples. Moving on, here is the actual uh, graphs. Here is the actual graphs for uh, the time dependent relaxation behavior. And as you can see, uh, the green curve is for the irradiated and it is uh, lower than the controlled sample. Uh, and this is plotted with one standard deviation uh, curves uh, with upper and lower bonds. Uh, for point 0.4 and point 0.5 sample, we see that uh, the data for irradiated sample is statistically significant and it is different 
from the control sample as it does not lie within the upper and lower bound of the control sample. But that is not the case with 0.35 sample and the reason for this might be uh, the grid size we adopted which is 5 by 5 might not be enough uh, considering the complex micro microstructural nature of the cement based indented and the variability. Um, and also the other reason might be that this indentation uh, might have happened on a bunch of unhydrated cement grains. Uh, so that might be the reason that uh, we see uh, the curve, a relaxation curve uh, in the upper and lower bound of the uh, controlled sample curve. So again, uh, I want to list the possible reasons uh, due to gamma irradiation and the neutron irradiation. Um, so Gamma radiation, uh, radiation uh, induces radiolysis, which is uh, evaporation of water or uh, uh, change in the water uh, structure of the cement paste, which releases the hydrogen gas and this puts pressure inside the porous uh, microstructure of the CSH, which leads to the formation of micro cracks and again altering the microstructure. Uh, cement hydrates uh, undergo amorphization, uh, which damages the microstructure, leading to decreased modulus. And unlike uh, the literature, we do see that there might be neutron effect or neutron influence on the cement paste sample as it is, um, it has a neutron knockout effect on the calcium ions. Uh, so the C in the CSH is uh, mainly affected and we see that uh, this influence may be on the water phase and as well as on the solid phase of the cement paste sample and which causes reduction in the strength and stiffness. Again, they are related to the time dependent behavior of the cement paste. To conclude, uh, we saw that there is a huge drop in the reduced modulus uh, and uh, this might be due to increase in the porosity of the sample, uh, which again confirms the possible mechanism of neutron induced damage. Uh, we also see a uh, decrease in the relaxation modulus of the irradiated cement paste samples and this might be due to the effect on the water molecules in the CSH uh, which again leads to increase in the porosity and uh, change in the uh, microstructure. Um, we found this deleterious effect on the irradiation, uh, effect of irradiation on the relaxation modulus and as well as the elastic uh, modulus at a much lower threshold levels compared to the reference levels uh, uh, by the previous researcher. And to address and understand the porosity changes in a better way, we intend to uh, study this uh, using um, other micromechanical techniques uh, such as scanning electron microscope and XRD. Uh, and we also want to understand uh, the effect of fast and thermal neutron dose effects. Um, and uh, to do so, uh, we will be uh, irradiating the cement based uh, samples uh, with varying the total dose rate and total dose uh, with uh, varying the ratio between thermal and fast neutrons. And we are already in the process and we are uh, expecting our first batch and starting the test very soon on this. Um, with this, I thank you for your attention and time and I am happy to take any questions you have. Thank you.